In this video, I'm explaining why I just sold two of my entire positions and trimmed another one, despite the vaccine news, which should hypothetically send us to the moon, right? Let's do it. What's going on everybody? My name is Matthew. Welcome back to my channel and today we are talking all about what I sold and why. I sold cake, Dan the man, and I trimmed Boeing. Give me the format. For each stock I'm going to talk about first when I got in, when I first talked about them on this channel, and how they've performed since then, which is kind of cool because I kind of get to judge myself and see how well we've been doing. Second, we'll talk about why I invested in these companies in the first place. Third, how their fundamentals changed at all. And finally, fourth, why I decided to sell at these prices. And this will also involve a little bit of technical analysis, which I know you guys enjoy. But before we jump into the individual stocks, let me just preface this video really quickly because all of the stocks we're talking about today are what I would personally consider value stocks or turnaround plays. And of course, recently there was some pretty big news regarding that area of the stock market, so let's address that first. Now, recently we had very positive news from Pfizer and all recovery stocks went wild. Cake up 24%, Win up nearly 27%, Carnival Cruise up nearly 34%, just to name a few. But in reality, we're still at all-time highs for daily cases in the US. And with holidays coming up and people traveling again, I doubt it'll go down anytime soon. The economy is still struggling and it will take a long time to repair. This vaccine is not some sort of immediate panacea for the economy, the Rony Rona, and the stock market. Now I understand the market is forward looking, but for me this reaction was a little too forward looking. We need answers to questions like how long before we actually receive the vaccine, I've heard people say before the end of the year and others after. We need to ask how many people are willing to receive it considering it's newly developed. The number of people willing to take it is actually dropping and the trial is not even over yet We still need more data Also, it certainly doesn't give me any more confidence in this trial when the CEO of Pfizer sells 60% of his stock on the same day of the announcement just four cents below the 52 week high for Pfizer Coincidence? I think not! In summary, I think this is a bit of an overreaction to the upside. Obviously, this is great news, but personally, I think things will take longer to recover and 20 plus percent jumps across the board was a bit too much in my opinion. Now let's get into the individual stocks. The first one is the Cheesecake Factory, ticker symbol cake. I had 110 shares of cake at an average cost basis of $22.22. .22. The first time I mentioned cake on this channel was in a best stocks to buy now video on June 30th. And at that time, the stock was around $22.92 per share. Today, cake is trading at $36.08 at the time of recording, meaning we saw a 57% gain since that video was posted. I actually sold cake on Monday, November 9th at $38.51 per share for a 73% gain on my position. And of course, top tier patrons were alerted. That's what this screenshot is all about. And here's also a screenshot of the order to sell from my broker. I originally invested in this stock as a recovery play because historically, cake has performed better in recessions and recovered much faster than the rest of the restaurant index as shown by their performance here in the 08 crisis. They also had large indoor layouts that would allow for socially distanced dining, whereas some restaurants did not have this inherent benefit in their locations. Management was also very skillful in how they were maneuvering the global situation and there were always lines in cheesecake drive throughs Their financials looked great to me at the time, especially compared to other restaurants and so I was pretty confident that they would bounce back from this whole situation. When I bought in, their stock was also down over 45% from their previous highs before the Rony Rona, so that left a lot of upside as we've seen already. Now this was originally a one to three year hold because that's how long I thought it would take for Cake's stock price and their business to recover. However, this vaccine news helped Cake jump over 24% in one day, bringing Cake almost near its pre-Rona prices. At Monday's prices, when the vaccine news was released, it was only down about 6% from its pre-Rona highs, and that did not add up to me. Now, let's just round up a little bit and say that Cake moves up another 5% or so, and now it's at the same level of the pre-outbreak prices. 
Now I ask myself, did the fundamentals of the Cheesecake Factory get better or worse since January? Obviously the answer is worse. So it didn't make sense to me to see the Cheesecake Factory at prices almost level with prices in January before the outbreak. And you can make the argument about the vaccine, but I already mentioned my thoughts on that in the beginning of this video. I think it was an overreaction and let's get into some technical analysis. Ready? Watch, watch this. All right, so if we zoom out to about five years ago on the Cheesecake Factory chart, we can see a pretty obvious support resistance right here at about $38.40, $38.50. So let's zoom in a little bit once we've drawn that. If we go to the one year, one day chart or the daily chart, we see that support resistance that we drew is zoomed in right here. And we can see that the Cheesecake Factory broke through but was not able to hold above this resistance. On the bright side, however, it did break out of this resistance. So next, I'm going to be watching to see if the Cheesecake Factory can bounce off of this trend line and use it as a support now or if it's going to fall back down and touch this support line. And if it breaks through this and drops back here, I may consider getting back in actually because that from where I sold at, let's see, 38.50 right here. From there to down here is about, you can't really see it because it's kind of small, but that's about a, almost a 20% drop from where I sold. So if it drops 20% from where I sold, I might have to get back in because it'd be following that previous trend at a much more healthy pace in my opinion. And as we can see, it is already pulling back from that resistance line that I drew and from where I sold. Now this was always meant to be a one to three year hold actually, but it turned into a four to five month hold because the market just moved that fast. I mean, the price has already played out to where I want it to get to so there's really no point in me to hold much longer if I think the price is disconnected from the fundamentals of the company. The second stock I sold from my value portfolio is Dana Incorporated aka Dan the Man, ticker symbol Dan. I had 130 shares of Dan the Man at a cost basis of $11.68 per share. The first time I talked about Dan was in my best cheap stock to buy now video on July 8th and at that time Dan was trading at about $11.50 cents actually under my cost basis today Dan is trading at sixteen dollars and about one cent resulting in a thirty eight point four nine percent gain since that video was released I sold Dan on Tuesday November 10th at fifteen dollars and eighty seven cents per share for a gain of just under thirty six percent this is the top tier patron alert in our discord and here's the photo for my broker for this one as well this was yet another turnaround play for me and it was much more a value stock by definition than Cake or Boeing, which we'll talk about next. Dana manufactures parts for light vehicles, commercial vehicles, and off-highway vehicles. They're awarded GM's 2019 Supplier of the Year Award for driveline technologies and powertrain cooling, being recognized for their commitment to differentiation through operational excellence and exceptional product technology. So obviously they're a solid business, at least from a customer's perspective. At the time of my first video, car demand was coming back stronger than expected, which meant Dana would would likely see revenues pick up as the economy hopefully recovered. But one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to get into Dana and why I thought it was undervalued was because of something called their price to book ratio. And I explain what that is in my Dana video, which you can find right here. But basically the PB ratio is something used by a lot of value investors and anything under one is usually considered a pretty good deal. With that in mind, Dan the man was trading at a PB ratio of 0.89 at the time I bought in. However, now Dana currently trades at a PB ratio of about 1.24 which is similar to what it was trading at about a year ago back in September of 2019. Thus, I no longer see the price to book ratio as a strong investment thesis point for Dana. Additionally, I had a price target of about $15 for this stock, so I'm happy to be able to sell for a profit above that price. I also want to talk about the technical analysis on this one as well, so let's do that right now. So zooming out again five years, looking at a weekly chart, we can see that there's a bit of a downtrend here for Dana, so I went ahead and drew a trend line there. Then if we zoom in and go to the daily chart on a one-year time frame, that's the trend line we just drew but zoomed in, and this is Dana here today. So if we zoom into the daily chart on Dana, I saw a resistance here and a resistance here. So it touched here, touched here, touched here, touched here. And right now it's kind of trading in that tight range and we'll see what it does. But if you look up to the right, you'll see that this trend line comes back into play. 
So I'm not really convinced that Dana will be able to break through this resistance if it's solely relying on the catalyst of the vaccine news. So that is why I sold. I thought it was a good place in a technical standpoint and also it was past my price target. So it made sense to take profit here for me. Now Dana does still have some growth opportunities. For example, their partnership with Hylion, but personally that's just not enough to keep me in the stock for much longer. And the third and final stock we're talking about today is a stock that I trimmed. It is Boeing, ticker symbol BA. The first time I talked about Boeing on the channel was on June 3rd when I had Boeing at a cost basis of 139.81 and I still used TD Ameritrade. In this video, I gave three reasons to buy Boeing. At the time this video was posted, BA was trading at 173.16. It had a huge run up right after I released that video and then came crashing back down. On June 11th, the stock was trading at 170 again, so I released a video explaining why I was holding the stock despite the violent drop. Today, Boeing is trading at 184 per share, making it about an 8% gain since I made that video on holding Boeing. I trimmed some BA in my Roth IRA on Tuesday, November 10th for $187.81 per share, resulting in a gain of about 22% on those shares because I had Boeing at about 153.79 in my Roth IRA. Here's the picture from the broker. It looks a little different because this one was sold in Fidelity where I have my Roth, not in Schwab. Boeing has had a rough go of it, no doubt. When I first bought in, I thought things would turn around much faster, but in their typical style, they pushed back things like their test flights over and over again, and things got dragged on. Additionally, they kept bleeding orders as more and more airlines canceled their orders from Boeing as the crisis persisted. However, with the vaccine news as well as with the news that the max may be getting ungrounded as soon as November 18th, I think Boeing could start to see some positive news cycles around the corner. But at the end of the day, this was just too big of an opportunity cost on my portfolio and Boeing has a lot more work cut out for them than I had previously anticipated and as things have unraveled the way they have. And by opportunity cost, I mean the cost of leaving my money in Boeing when it could be in other stocks like Facebook. That's why I trimmed some position in my Roth. On the bright side, their military contracts have been able to keep the company stable as anticipated in both of my Boeing videos, as not all of their revenue is from airlines as some people may think. However, because I do still think that Boeing is capable of getting back closer to its previous highs, and because this is a one to three year hold like the other ones were supposed to be, they just moved a lot faster, I am still holding shares of Boeing. I was just trimming this position once again. And super quickly, looking at the daily chart for Boeing, it looks like it may struggle to get out of this resistance right here that we've seen it touch one, two, three, four, maybe five times and right now it's proving to be true as it is dropping right after touching that resistance today however on the bright side because it seems like we have to look to the bright side a lot of times when talking about Boeing it is above the 200 SMA which we're hoping can serve as some sort of support today and as long as it stays above that I think that is very good news at least from a technical standpoint I would greatly appreciate a smashing of that like button for this video those are the three stocks that I sold and trimmed this past week and again top tier patrons are always alerted when I buy or sell a stock. I almost always provide the reasoning for my moves. I also recorded a quick 15 minute video for the patrons on a secret little channel that I should not be telling you about. Shh, just be, shh, it's our secret. And talking about why I sold these stocks and I posted that the day that I sold them to kind of share my thought process. So if this sounds interesting to you, if you think you'd find value there, you can check that out in the first link in the description below. So make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, check out a quote of the day. You might just learn something. Make sure to follow me on Instagram for daily posts about my portfolio, stocks I'm watching and all that good stuff. If you're still watching at this point in the video, you are the real MVPs. Don't forget your peace and thank yous.